Hello fun people, we've had a great month here at Extreme Kids. We faced some of our fears, we found out that we can still stand tall and do what we should, even when we feel scared or uncertain. That's what courage is all about. Courage is about being brave enough to do what you should do, even when you're afraid. The biggest reason we can have courage is that we know we're not standing up to our fears alone. God is with us and we know that we can trust God no matter what. Sometimes it's hard to know which way to go or which turn to take, but it helps to remember that God is with us wherever we go. We can have courage because we know that God is with us every step of the way. It's like we read in our memory verse, Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. Say this with us. Be strong and brave. Do not be afraid. Do not lose hope. I am the Lord, your God. I will be with you wherever you go. Yes, we can do what we should, no matter what we're afraid of. We can be brave because God is with us and we're never alone. Let's lift our voices and worship God now. I will not fear I know the storms will come I know I'm not alone You are my strength so I will say You let me brave You give me courage I won't be afraid I won't even worry Cause you've got the whole world in your hands You fight for me You help me stand you that God is bigger than all of our fears. God is bigger than anything we will ever face. I love worshiping God with you. Now, we are about to hear a story about a young woman named Esther. The story before the story. Today, we're in book 17 of the Old Testament, Esther. God made a plan to bless the whole world through Abraham's family, the Israelites. But over and over, God's people would run to God and then pull away, back and forth just like a yo-yo. At last, God allowed the Israelites to be captured by foreign nations so they would understand they can only be happy close to God. 
Even in captivity though, some of these men and women still loved and honored God, like a girl named Esther and her cousin Mordecai, which is where our epic story begins. Take it away. Years before, the Jewish people had been captured and taken from Jerusalem to Babylon. But then, Babylon was conquered and became part of the Persian Empire, with Susa as its capital. So, Esther grew up in a land that was not her own. And when her parents died, her cousin, Mordecai, raised her as his own daughter. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. One day, a new king named Xerxes came to power in Persia. And this guy was a character. He threw a crazy wild party and then fired his own queen for refusing to show up. Not the kind of guy you want running your country. Anyhow, when he finally calmed down, he realized he didn't have a queen anymore. So he decided to look for a new one. After a long search through the entire kingdom, Xerxes chose Esther. Cousin Mordecai, what do I do? Don't tell anyone you're from a Jewish family. We've already seen that Xerxes didn't bother to think much before making decisions, so he chose on a whim to promote an official named Haman to take charge of all the other nobles in the kingdom. Haman had a ginormous ego, and he loved making all the other officials outside the palace bow low to him. But Mordecai refused to bow down to Haman, and this made Haman so mad, he about went through the roof! Haman was such a terrible guy that he decided not only to punish Mordecai, but every single Jew in the country. He went to King Xerxes with a terrible plan. <laughs> Your Majesty, these Jews live differently than everyone else. They don't obey your laws. Who do they think they are? I know, right? <laughs> Give the order to destroy them. Hmm. Consider it done. I can't even. Xerxes actually sent a letter all over the kingdom declaring that on the 13th day of the 12th month, all Jews were to be killed. When Mordecai and the other Jews discovered this horrible news, they dressed in rough cloth and wept bitterly. Mordecai sent a message to Esther in the palace, telling her what Haman had done. You must ask the king to save our people. Esther was devastated. She sent a response to her cousin. Tell him, no one can come before the king unless he sends for them. If I do it, I'll die, unless he reaches out his gold scepter to me. Mordecai sent his answer right back. You may not escape, even though you are queen. Who knows? It's possible you became queen for a time just like this. Esther knew Mordecai was right. She sent him one more message. Tell Mordecai, gather all the Jews. Don't eat anything for three days. I and my servants will fast too. Then I'll go to the king. Esther faced a terrible dilemma, but she took three days to prepare her heart and her mind. Then she went to face the king. It must have taken every ounce of courage Esther had to step through those doors. And then she had to wait what felt like an eternity for the king to even notice her. At last, he looked up, then he smiled and reached out his golden scepter. What is it, Queen Esther? I'll give you anything up to half my kingdom. <sighs> Esther must have been shaking with relief, but instead of making her request right away, she asked the king to attend a special banquet along with Haman. The king was flattered and curious. At the banquet, he told her once more, I'll give you anything up to half my kingdom. I'd like you and Haman to come to another feast tomorrow. Then I'll answer your question. What? The king was so intrigued. He agreed to come back again. The next night, he and Haman joined Esther at a second festive meal. What do you want me to do for you? 
I'll give you up to half my kingdom. Esther took a deep breath and put it all on the line. Your Majesty, let me live. Please spare my people. We have been sold to be destroyed. Who is the man who has dared to do such a thing? Haman is the one. Xerxes was so enraged that he had Haman killed. Then the king created a new order that would allow the Jews to be saved. We will celebrate this day with great joy. The end. We have something special for you all today. Check out our Extreme Kids Talent segment. Hey everybody, today I'm going to be teaching you how to do a courage painting. So what you need is your five white paints plus a white paint, your palette, your one large brush and one medium brush, a pencil, and your canvas. Once you have your canvas, make sure you paint it white before you begin and then you're going to draw out little squiggly lines with your pencil. Then what you're going to do is start mixing your paints. So what you can see me doing right now is mixing all my paints because I'm adding white to them. You do not have to add white to yours if you don't want to, but I'm just adding white to mine to give it a little bit of a, I don't know, pastelliness because I don't want it to be so dark. So. And I'm just going on to the next color and the next color until all of them are the colors that I really want. And what I'm trying to go for is a light, like pastel color. Once you have created the colors that you want or that you put your colors in the palette, you're going to want to start on the color that you prefer first. I chose green because that's the color scheme that I want. And I'm just painting the inside of one of the, of two of the lines, I paint the inside of it so that it will create the pattern that I want. So that's what I'm doing. And you want to move very slowly while you're doing this and you don't want to go too fast because you want to be patient while you're Painting takes a long time and you don't have to rush yourself because it's okay if you take a long time. But one thing that you can do is you can use a blow dryer if you want to go faster. So I recommend I recommend really letting it air dry, dry while you move to a different section of your painting. But you can also use a blow dryer to make it go faster. So now that I'm getting finished with the green, I'm gonna start move, start doing my perfectionist because I like to be perfect in everything I do, even though I'm not. But now that I finished like the first, my first layer, because I like to use multiple layers in order for it to be like really good. You do not have to use multiple layers. But once I do the first color, which is green for me, I'm going to move on to the next color in a different section and just do the first line. So I'm just painting on the inside of that with the purple and doing the same thing that I did with the green except for I'm just painting it with purple. And you're going to do that for all of the little sections that you have but only with the first one that you have, the first line. Once you are finished with your painting, it should look sort of like mine, but everyone's is going to be different, so it doesn't have to look exactly like mine. And you're going to want to write courage in the middle of it because it wouldn't be a courage painting without the word courage. In it. And yeah, you can use the white paint to clean up any white spots that you have. And 
that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching my tutorial. That was great. Now back to our extreme host. Esther must have been so scared to go to the king and ask him to save her people. She knew it was a big risk and that she was putting her life on the line. She truly had no idea what would happen next. She knew she had to speak up. God put her in the position as queen so she can save the Jewish people from Haman's plan. With God's help, you can be courageous like Esther. You can be brave even if you don't know what will happen next. That's what we need to remember today. You can do what you should, even when you don't know what will happen. For now, let's head to small group and talk some more about how we can be brave. And a question to think over, when have you done something you were afraid to do?